Hey guys, MasterZeon1001 here. A popular question that I get all the time is, hey, how do you apply every Boolean ever? Just apply all the Booleans, just be done. What if I just said, I'm done with Booleans altogether? Well, that's where batch ops comes in. Applying every Boolean, period, across all objects, that is something I would definitely consider a batch operation. So right here in the end panel, I'm just gonna right click and choose apply. And with that, those booleans are gone. And so what if we also wanted to uh, deal with mirror? Like what if I wanted only the objects that have mirrors? I right click, select, choose modifiers objects, or even select view or go under view and choose isolate. And this is everything that has a mirror. I can right click this, apply it. Mirror is now a distant memory. And we go back to local mode. And that is what batch operations is all about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. So in this video, we'll be using batch ops version 051. And here you can see the preferences that I have checked. You can also see I have materials, uh, modifiers, and collections enabled. And we can go ahead and save preferences and jump in here. So um, whenever you use batch operations, we can press in and jump to the batch panel. And you can see that with a simple file, there's nothing. It's boring. There's nothing exciting to do here. However, if we were to jump in our material panel and start creating a material, and then we take this shape, C sharp it, adjust the bevel width, start using box cutter, and just adding some complexity to the scene via us just working. We can see this tool rapidly adding additional things of interest for us to uh, come back and mess with. So, <clears throat> one of the things that you might notice in batch operations is how when you select on a uh, modifier, it will select all the objects if we have nothing selected. Uh, you can just click on Boolean, it will select everything with a Boolean modifier. And that is because inside of Sync Selection, we have it set to Always. However, if we just set it to Default, uh, we can just select Boolean, we can jump between all the options because this is a slightly different behavior you can use this as. So right here, I can right click, you select, choose Select All, or uh, actually uh, with Boolean, we'll go ahead and select, choose op Modifiers to Objects. So we select everything that has a Boolean modifier. We can even right click this and choose apply and that will apply everything. Now what's interesting is that the uh, apply button here is actually apply for whatever is selected here. So if we were to right click this and choose add to quick favorites, we now have inside of our queue menu the apply button. And you can see I have a couple of apply buttons here because uh, I've played with this a couple of times already. But continuing on, we just go here, we continue working, and we're just doing our cuts right. I get a lot of questions where people are asking uh, when is box cutter going to have a dedicated apply booleans button because it's uh, confusing to apply booleans and while some people debate that using convert to mesh can work I personally think that we need a very large green button up here that will apply booleans on selection however in the meantime batch operations already has this functionality built in because it's a problem that they solve so for example I could select this because boolean is selected I could press Q choose apply it will apply this is almost like having a C-sharp uh, that doesn't actually do any sharpening of the mesh. So this is a really interesting behavior that um, I've just been experimenting with and coming to terms with because the depth of this tool isn't immediately apparent whenever you first install it. But as you begin using it more and more and you start having more and more modifiers going on, you're trying to get the stuff exported to ZBrush or Octane or wherever direction that you're taking your things, you find that dealing with things in a large massive batch operation across collections is something that isn't entirely ideal or is a possibility at this time. Who knows how that will change in the future, but at this time, <coughs> batch operations is currently the only tool I can think of that can fulfill some of the needs that it does fulfill, which is why I used it quite a bit in 2.7 and before, and why I was extremely happy to see this in 2.8. So continuing on, this mesh is built up out of this, but there's a bunch of modifiers. We just go in here, quick favorites apply, we clear that out. Uh, lattices are being listed because of a glitch with box cutter, they're not supposed to actually be showing. But if we go ahead and pause here, we can jump to a more complex scene in which I can show you this tool in action in a more of a pinch situation. All 
Alright guys, so here we are with a more complex scene. If we click on the look dev icon, it will jump over to a look dev view. I love seeing uh, Eevee kind of bounce into place. Don't like seeing it jump between wires and whatnot though, so we'll turn off overlays for a moment. And because the scene is so loaded, so heavy, we press the end panel and Merry Christmas. We have a whole lot of information here that we can mess with and use to isolate and lock this scene down. So first thing I'm going to do is turn off uh, motion blur and I can right click any of these modifiers here and just choose to disable that which will, uh, you know, Christmas is over so we no longer need the snow. Uh, another interesting use for this that you'll be seeing in the future is I'll be able to right click uh, like for example here, I'll right click Boolean under view, choose isolate, and now I'm looking at only the areas that are uh, containing active Boolean modifiers. And we see here that uh, 464 Booleans are here uh, based off previous video tests. I know that when I apply this, it will, uh, for one, take a moment because of all these modifiers, but two, nine of them will be left because they're not active in the visible scene. So let's go ahead and do that. And with that, they are applied. So now we've basically done a type of C-sharp that uh, does not exist yet, where we've mashed all the Boolean modifiers that are presently visible, uh, thus simplifying the scene, making it a little bit easier on the computer's processing it. And we can press forward slash to get out of local view. And let's talk about bevel. Let's say I wanted to look at just bevel. Let's just isolate it. Everything you see here contains a bevel modifier. Uh, making these sort of selections is something that just was not possible uh, except in the previous form of batch operations in Blender 2.7 era. But being able to quickly come in here and, uh, for example, let's say I wanted to turn off all the baffling just to uh, make the scene a little bit lighter. We can just use view, choose disable, and just quickly disable all those modifiers. And everything looks like tar, and that's because the weighted normals has nothing to latch onto, so let's also disable that. And now we have a simplified, much more nimble version of this scene that doesn't have all these bevel modifiers in place. In fact, we can always just right click, choose enable. It's almost like having a small scene uh, manager that can help you manage things at a greater level. And I haven't even begun to get into the complexities of whenever you add additional panels and use various sync selections. Like so, for example, I can right click choose to view, isolate. Everything you see here contains this material. Uh, with one click, right click and choose remove. We have removed that material from every object that contains it. And with everything selected using A, we want overlays for this. With everything selected using A, I can right click here, choose assign. Everything has been assigned this material. So this is something that is very similar to what we have with the Alt-M. However, after seeing the potential of batch modifiers and batch materials in action and talking through it with Ivan and the team of the other creator, I see immense potential with um, integrating this deeper into hard off. So this tool is something that I cannot stress uh, the need for. However, it's something that really depends on the level of usage that you're having with Blender, for example. Uh, in this situation here, you see I'm dealing with a uh, fairly complex scene, but really a complex scene is nothing more than just complexity. I mean, if we press one, this is what the scene is. It's nothing. It's just a single cell cut from a cube, seriously, with a extension box. And then layer two is just a bunch of collections of this. So being able to quickly go through and manage this sort of stuff, like for example, I could even isolate uh, Tony's decals, right? And just look at this particular decal, adjust values on to see what I want to do with it, and real quickly press forward slash to get out of local mode. And this is something I find to be of immense value in batch ops. In closing, I must throw in that uh, initially when Ivan first showed me this tool uh, in the 2.8 iteration, I just started installing it and started using it and started giving notes on things that I wish were different and changes I would suggest. However, after sitting down and actually pouring through the quick start guide and just pouring through all the features uh, with Ivan, it, it became immediately obvious that there was a lot of care and potential put into this tool that I wasn't aware of. And so I definitely cannot stress enough that if you do pick up this tool to definitely check out the documentation. A lot of care has been put into it. 
I can always respect some good and proper, nice, well-written documentation. And just by going through this and seeing what this tool has to offer and then applying it to your own workflows as little or as much as you need, similar to hard ops, um, you'll find that there are a lot of interesting things that are able to be done here that just weren't possible on a global level. Um, I was previously using this primarily with exporting out to other software like Octane or uh, sending it to people who I was collaborating with using 3ds Max or Maya or something like that. And this tool was able to really quickly help me get in there and batch manage modifiers. However, there are many additional things that I didn't cover over the scope of this video, like uh, batch applying things, uh, material uh, applying in edit mode. There's uh, a lot of interesting things that I just did not go through where it just has a lot of potential. And since this is its first version, this means that the tool only has room to grow from here. So. For anyone interested in uh, contributing any sort of notes or um, suggestions on improvements or wishes or requests, uh, there should be a thread of this over on Blender Artist where you should be able to uh, give your input and props as well as ask questions on how to best use this tool. Even the copy and paste is something that I found to be ridiculously amazing and useful uh, just for materials and modifiers. If you wanted to copy and paste a specific chain of modifiers from an object to an object without using control L, you know, that's one thing. But being able to copy a chain of materials from object to object is a whole nother thing. And this tool is capable of doing it all. So if you're dealing with any sort of project-based work, I cannot recommend this tool enough. Batch operations, link will be in the description. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.